Hello guys, my name is Pavel Křupala from BlenderFig.com and welcome to the conclusion for the Node Editor tutorial series. Let's have a quick recap of what we actually did accomplish with the Node Editor tutorial series. So this is the web page for the series and if you haven't seen that, the link is gonna be in the description. We went through the tutorials from the beginning where we started the naive and easy implementation, easy to follow, especially for the beginners. And we tried to somehow implement some scene navigation, zooming and moving around the scene, also creating some nodes, sockets and edges, trying to position them, connect them together. So at the end of this chapter, we were starting to having some kind of an application which should look like a node editor. Then we switched to a little bit more advanced stuff. So we started to talk about the serialization and how to implement undo, redo, saving, loading to the files. Also, we tackled the issue of creating and maintaining the main window with the menu, also working with the clipboard itself. And we tried to fix some crashes. And we started slowly to talk about debugging, which can be sometimes really a pain since we are using PyQt, which is just a wrapper for the Qt library, which is written in C++ DLL, even though we are running that from Python. Somewhere in the middle, we managed to create our first Python package and we started to think about how to manage the code for the other applications we would possibly write in the future. So to be able to do that, I started another example called calculator example, which is supposed to be just a simple demonstration of how the node editor can or should be used. And we managed to add the support for the MDI sub windows, create another dark skin, also to stylize somehow the nodes itself. And we were refactoring the code a lot so we could maintain it somehow reusable for other projects. After that, we were extending the calculator a little bit more to be able to support the drag and drop, rewriting the edges handling, also some of the socket stuff, the serialization. Here we were also fiddling with the Qt skin generator so we could write our own version of the QSS styles, which are kind of a little bit broken. So basically the Qt skin generator is something I quickly created to be able to write in stylus and convert them to QSS styles to support features which are not supported by default in QSS, like functions and overriding, etc. And we also created some basic framework for the node evaluation itself. Once we start to create our own application, the evaluation of the nodes is going to be the meat of our application. So we spent quite some time trying to design some framework which can be reusable as much as possible. Here and there we added some nice features like hovering effects, also tackled how to create the documentation in depth with Sphinx. And then I just tried to do more fixes to avoid crashing and improve the reusability of the code. So we went through a lot together. And during that time, I actually received a bunch of emails and nice comments on YouTube. Also some Patreons joined already. And I wanted to take some time to thank you very much for your support, guys. I do really appreciate that a lot. And still, if you do find some bug or you just want to request some feature, go ahead and go to the GitLab repository itself. The link is again going to be in the description. And here you can find the issues where you can fill in any comment or concern you got about the code. For example, if your application is crashing for some reason, you could try to figure that out. Or if you want to request a feature, just label it feature. And we can discuss it here also with other developers. If you got any questions or you just want to chat, there is a Discord channel which you can join. It's here. Link is again going to be in the description. And if you got stuck somewhere in the tutorials and you can't find any help in the comments on the YouTube underneath the video, just join the chat and hopefully you will get some answers. If you have a look at the repository itself, the note editor package is already committed to the pip repository, so you can install it with pip install note editor. And this is going to download you this note editor folder which contains the library itself. However, you are not going to have the examples. 
if you want to check them out, just go ahead in the GitLab repository, download or clone this repository here. And here in the examples, you can find the example calculator and the example test of how to use the library itself. There is also the documentation. It's really easy to set it up. When you go and create an account on Regedocs, you can just connect your GitLab repository here. It will hook up to your repository. So any commit to the master branch is going to trigger the documentation building. So online, you can find the documentation on pyqt node editorreaderdocsio And here you can find the documentation for all of the modules inside the package and also some general information about the events they use in Node Editor, about the serialization, how the evaluation is supposed to work, and also coding standards, which I'm trying to follow throughout the code. So now to the question, are we actually finished? Is it done already? So if you were following along and you tried to write the code on your own, the answer is going to be definitely no, the heck we are not finished, we can't be finished. We just started with our application and we need to implement this feature and we need to fix those bugs here and then there is going to be another 128 features we want to implement to have our software finished. And speaking of that, I believe it would be really nice if you could join on Discord or maybe send me by an email if you are willing to some screenshots or maybe a video of the software you are trying to do or just of your own version of the note editor and try to describe what you are trying to achieve. Maybe we could just share that on Discord or maybe I can create a YouTube video in the future and maybe we could all get some inspiration or maybe even some help from the others. That would be really nice, I think. But on the other side, if you were following along, you are probably sooner or later going to take kind of a different approach to other issues concerning the node editor itself. So maybe you would deviate from the code a lot. And if that's the case, the more I go further and further through the code, the more irrelevant the videos will be. So this is why this is going to be the last episode of the node editor tutorial series. However, in the future, from time to time, there will be some bonus videos where I would like to talk about how to implement certain features like for example edge rerouting or socket snapping and so on. So stay tuned, there will come some videos sooner or later. But officially this series has come to an end. I personally, I was working on the use of the note editor in an application on my own and this project is pretty big. And I still don't want to reveal too much information about that, but I will share this information when the time's right on my YouTube channel. So overall, I wanted to thank you again for watching this series, for your kind support. And a special shout out goes for Evan Atherton and Andrew Bashun for their kind support on Patreon. And I hope you enjoyed the series, learned something here and there. And most importantly, that you had fun following the series. So for now, I wish you good luck with your projects. And I hope to see you soon in later videos.